Hi, uh, my name is Robert Merritt. I'm applying for the <clears throat> TAC position for the for the School of Social Science at the North Carolina Governing School. My friend Danny Nyerman is going to interview me. This is my second second try of doing this. The first time I did it, the computer just stopped recording in the middle of it. So now I'm using my friend's computer to do it. So hopefully it'll work out this time. I'm here in CalArts's sunny reading room. There's all these magazines behind me, ready to go. Yeah. So. Um, Danny, you're going to ask the first question. <clears throat> Here are five of the preliminary responsibilities of the counseling part of being a TAC. Choose one of these and explain any experience you have had to prepare you for this role. <clears throat> Creating a sense of community and order. Providing for the health and safety of students. Listening to students' personal reactions and problems and seeking help. Participating and assisting in the Governor's School Social and Academic Arts events. Enforcing Governor's School Policy as enumerated in the Student Honor Code. Can you read the first, the first options again? Just like the, the, the last ones. Creating a sense of community and order. Mm -hmm. Providing for the health and safety of students. Listening to the students' personal reactions and problems and seeking yeah. help. Yeah, that, that's, that should be good, okay. I guess, in terms of the sense of community and order, I can say that in my experience teaching over the last, you know, the last year, basically, I come to the classroom, I come into the classroom, and it's like I really want to treat it as an environment of open exchange between the students. And a, an important part of that, as, as community and order have been paired together, is just making sure that everybody not only gets a chance to speak, but they know that they're, when, they're, they, when they do get a chance to speak, that their voices are heard and, and you know, accepted. So I feel like, I don't know, I, I just try all the time to encourage my students. There's, this, there's a teacher here at the school um, named Jen Hofer, and she has this policy called like step up and step back, which is, I think, kind of a, a funny way of, of saying it, but like knowing when to, <clears throat> excuse me, knowing when to share your voice with the class and knowing when it's your, when it's your turn to, to kind of let others speak and, and, and hear, really hear um, what, what's going on. I think listening in that way is like such a huge part of just having like an open exchange with students. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean like it, it, the whole thing is like this reciprocal thing when you're in the classroom. I, I just like, when, when you get in there, my students are, come from like a, a, like a huge variety of backgrounds. They're dancers and they're filmmakers and, and you know, when, when they come into the classroom, they have their own energies and talents and wide range of, you know, of skills. And so it's like, it's just really important to check in with them at the beginning of each class and see where everybody's coming in, uh, how everybody's kind of coming in there, what, what the energy is, and be able to just cater to their individual needs, but also just kind of establish the room as like this space for, for sharing and, and, uh, and creating. Yeah. <laughs> Although your work will mostly involve community building, Particular student problems occasionally will arise. Here is a list of common problems. Choose one of these situations and explain how you would handle it. Homesickness at the beginning of the session. Personal insecurity, discomfort with social life. Personal conflicts, like between roommates or among hallmates. Inappropriate behavior, like excessive noise after curfew. Yeah. Grief in the loss of a family member or in a relationship change. What was the one about the, what was like the, maybe the third option was about? Personality conflicts. Personality conflicts in like the hall, residence hall. Mm -hmm. um, well, I guess I can speak to this <laughs> directly. I've had, a, I, I've had a lot of experiences just in various living situations of being kind of a mediator actually. Um, starting in, I mean, my own experience back in college, like I, I lived in a, my freshman year I lived in like a forced triple. It was a room not really much bigger actually than this room that I'm in right now. Um, and I had these two roommates, and we were in this very, very small space. We had bunk beds, and it was like our first year of college and everything. We were just like trying to figure it all out, you know? And often, like, we, we all got along, but occasionally things would come up with noise and like all these different things. And I was kind of always that like third party that was in between, you know, everybody uh, making sure that everybody got along and, and <laughs> was, we, we communicated the right time to go to sleep and, and stuff like that. As a residential advisor, also, I think, as I would be at the you know, Carolina Governor's School, basically, like, every, the, the pri primary goal of people being there is, is for academic reasons. And, and it's really important to 
make sure for that reason that everybody's getting sleep and everybody's kind of sharing in a, in a, in a, a mutual respect for the space and for their fellow students. I really, um, yeah, I'm, I'm a very good like mediator for interpersonal conflicts and stuff and I would just refer them back constantly to the fact that we're all here together to like do this thing and of course refer them to the, the disciplinary code of the school I'm a really, you know, I'm a nice guy, I'm very open, but, you know, when it comes to things like this, it's important to just, like, establish a sort of, like, chain of command when there's a lot of high school students, a lot of different emotions and, and people all together in a space. So I feel like, yeah, I, I, I'm comfortable dealing with, like, a lot of different age ranges of kids. I mean, the people that I've been teaching this last year are all, are all freshmen, and there's been a, a couple of disciplinary things when I've had to you know, take a student aside and speak to them in the hallway or, or whatever outside of class about some of their behavior, but for the most part, it's, it's really good. I, I, I try to, I don't know, I'm a, di I'm a disciplinarian, but I'm like, I guess I'm, I'm nice about it or something, but yeah, I, I guess that, that sort of answers that. <laughs> to become more specific, Consider the following scenario and explain what you would do in your role as DAC. <coughs> you wake up in the middle of a Saturday night to discover one of your students entering the hall. It is evident that the student is returning to the dorm after having left campus during the night, a clear honor code violation. Mm -hmm. The student denies having been off, camp off campus and then claims it was only for a few mi minutes to see a friend in town. Is that, is that, is that it? So they've gone out and they've come back, okay. After curfew. After curfew. I mean, the first thing to do is, one, one depends on what my relationship with, was, with this person would be. I think that's probably from the, from the beginning. But I mean, I mean, I would just refer them to the honor code, number one. Talk to them personally about, about this thing. If this had been like a repeat offense or something, then, you know, obviously that's a, that's a much larger issue. But if, of course I would report this immediately to my supervisor and then you know we, we would go from there in terms of talking to the student and seeing how we would handle this. I think that if this was a repeat offense that we would have to can, I don't know, take, take further disciplinary actions of having the uh, <clears throat> having to maybe speak with the student about leaving the program. I, I had a student, this was at the creative writing class that I taught back in Portland where and there it was a small class and this was, this was elementary school kids but fourth grade boys, third, third and fourth grade boys, but so it's a slightly different thing, but I had this one student that, man, he was just really, really disruptive and like was really disrupting everybody else and keeping them from getting their work done. And what ended up happening was like, I, I didn't want him to leave my class, but of course like for, for the greater good as it were, I really, I, I spoke to my supervisors about this, I spoke with the kid's parents and then we went forward and, and ended up that, it ended up that he, um, he had to leave the class just because it just wasn't working out. We gave him another shot and it, it just didn't work, unfortunately. So sometimes that is the case, um, and but you know, treat it accordingly. Talk about a time when you took a stand for something in which you believe, but that was an unpopular position. What was the stand? What did you do and say? How did it turn out? Interesting. Well. I'm thinking now about my time here at CalArts, I guess. I've had to be very, very proactive with the student community and with the teachers and our administrators about having representation in the program for, for our department, uh, especially because the School of Critical Studies, I don't wanna, I don't wanna complain too much, but our, our department is one of the, the most um, poorly funded of, of all the programs here at the, at the Institute. And so I've had to really stand up and go and have all these meetings with the you know, Dean of Financial Aid, who told me on two occasions that our department was a sinking ship, which was like a really disheartening thing to hear, and you know, speak to a number of other administrators and teachers, and, and just really like make sure that I'm, I've been, you know, I have, I've had a ton of, last, at the end of last semester, I had a ton of meetings with all these individual all these uh, members of my cohort and, and kids who are in the graduating class this year to feel like to feel out how the program has been affecting them and what their relationships has been what their relationship has been like to you know 
fund allocation, representation in the program, like relationships with the mentors. I'm, I'm not officially the, the, the representative for my class, but I work really closely with her as a girl named Julia, and we basically meet all the time and discuss like the ins and outs and are trying to create this relationship with the um, MA Aesthetics and Politics, which is the program that Danny is in, to try to, to try to just create some sense of a community here, more so, because it seems like I don't know, we just had to put a lot in, into it. I guess, I don't know, it's not maybe not the best answer for that, but I feel like it has been sort of like an unpopular position because it's not as if the teachers aren't completely supportive of, of you know, they, they want us to have funding, and full, full funding and have representation, but they're so busy and, you know, we're all so busy in this program doing the academic work we came here to do that, like, to do that extra thing, it just becomes kind of, I don't know, uh, kind of a problem sometimes. So it's, it's yeah, it's been a real challenge, but it, it has had positive effects, at least immediately on bringing people a lot closer together and feeling like, you know, we're, we're in this thing, there's a lot of good writers here, like let's try to make the best of this um, and let's try to work on a cohesive strategy for going forward. Um, a, a close friend of mine is actually leaving the program and or is considering leaving the program right now. And after this Wednesday, when I'm finished with all my work, we have this plan to meet and go to the president and go to this, um, another one of the student representative deans um, who's in charge of admission and just try to plug in at every, every way possible um, to, you know, to kind of support the student. So anyways, yeah, that, I think that's, that's basically that. As we try to know you via this imperfect video interview, Help us by, by naming a few of the personal strengths or leadership skills that you would bring to the TAC position. Tell us about those personal <laughs> gifts that you may not have touched on this interview, or reiterate those you think are particularly pertinent. Okay, yeah, <laughs> sure. I think that I'm a, just in the example that I just provided to you, I think that the idea of like bringing a lot of people together, I'm, I'm really good at doing that. In some ways, I don't normally say that because I just kind of like to talk to people a lot and, and hear where they're coming from. But the same way in the classroom, I guess with with my students, I just I'm really interested in, in what they're working on and like what they're doing. As I as I mentioned before, you know, this is an art school, so my students come from all these different backgrounds that have a ton of work to show, or they have you know a performance, or they have you know an installation that they're doing, and like I really try to connect with them, um, and so. And, and see their work and, and show them my work. I, I sometimes do readings in the class actually, which is kind of a fun thing. But you know, just like I, I just want to put in that that effort. So when it comes to you know writing the academic papers or something, or if a student, if a student when when a student is challenged by you know an assignment, a lot of these a lot of my students have never written critical essays before, which is what the first class that I taught last semester was was a writing composition course. And so they were very, there was like a lot of, um, I don't know, felt really hesitant and kind of nervous to go about doing this. And so I just like told them about my experience with writing my own essays and my own challenges that I faced. I think I'm, I'm good, to go back to my skills, I think I'm good at communicating that kind of like empathy um, and establishing those relationships. And anyways, like it, it just, when I would meet with students one on one or when we'd be in the classroom and talking about this, it just kind of leveled everything out in a way um, that, you know, showing an interest in their work, sh telling them a little bit about myself, showing them my work, just established this rapport that we were able to really, I don't know, make the classroom a much more cohesive, like, working um, environment, I guess. Yeah, I don't know, other other skills, <laughs> other personal skills. I think, yeah, just, like, the idea of, of, of communicating between a lot of different types of people. The other thing, that, the other thing I'll say is that I have a, a very diverse background in, in academic, um, in, in, in the academics coming from out of college. I, I studied anthropology for the entire time that I was in school. My, my degree is in a department called Modern Culture and Media, which at Brown University was formerly known as the Semiotics Department. They combined a lot from, from film history, continental philosophy, and of course film production, um, semiotic and linguistic theory and, and all that stuff. But I, I did both the art side of things, film, film production and, and, and visual art as well as doing the you know the essay writing, the critical work, and, and and ethnographic writing in my other my other field of study, which was anthropology there. So I have a, a I think just being able to go back and forth between kind of like the arts world and then like the hands-on making stuff, ma making a film, 
you know, writing a critical essay, going to, you know, directing a film where there's a lot of people involved. I'm just like kind of good at, at trading, um, trading back and forth. I'm just, I'm just remembering now, actually, I got, one time I, I was, when I was in middle school, I got an award that was called the Octopus Arms, which was kind of a, a goofy name, but like, it was, I think, kind of fitting for me in a way. I was, I was working as a, like a backstage tech and we'd designed this huge like radio for this, uh, sh for a play called Radio Days um, that like all the actors came out of and stuff. And I was like talking to the actors and, and doing, doing all these things. But at the end of it, like I got this award <laughs> um, called the Octopus Arms Award. That was just for those, I don't know, they, they would make up all these names. And that was for me being able to like kind of change roles all the time. And I don't know, I think that's kind of like, yeah, fitting of my personality, being able to, to jump into a lot of places and, I think that I think that's sort of it. I also play music, and <laughs> I do a lot of other fun things. So yeah. Anyways, I, I just thought I'd plug that really fast. I'm good at I'm good at guitar. <laughs> yeah. Is are there any more questions for there? Yeah. Well, well, thank you so much. Um, look forward to hearing to hearing back from you guys. I will uh, send an email also as a follow up. Thank you.